it's breaking up a lot now so i think this is probably going to be its end yeah it's really really struggling now so loads of you guys ask me all the time what is the range like on the DJI Mini 4 Pro with the RC2. Is it actually any better than the DJI RC? Is it all just marketing? Let's find out. Now, what I do want to say is that this is incredibly boring. I would much rather be flying to that over there, just slightly in the distance, or maybe going over there and getting some wave shots. That is what these drones are for, not going as far as possible over there to deliver some Haribo to your mate in another town. But loads of you guys ask me what the Mini 4 Pro is like. So let's get on with it. Let's switch to the voiceover. Okay, let's get on with the range test. And first of all, it is much better now. I get this 1080p 60 live feed on the RC2. I used to get 720p maximum 30 on the RC. So this is much better live feedback. We've got pretty great conditions today as well. The wind ran about 10 miles an hour. I'm flying into the wind, which you should always do. So that's great. Now also I'm gonna be flying to start with about 40 meters in height. You can keep a look at that all the time. I'm gonna be putting arrows over the screen. And I'm also, as I'm just setting this up, I'm gonna be switching a lot my attitude indicator, which is in the bottom left-hand corner between the live feed map like you can see here and also the radar map as well. So I'm gonna be switching that throughout the video and I'll tell you when I am doing. So we're approaching around about 500 meters in the distance now and no issues there with the RC signal at the very top of this screen. And I also did a similar test on the Mini 3 Pro and the signal was good enough for majority of situations. However, on a long distance test, around about 2000 meters in a couple of different locations was its maximum. So it was okay, but I'm hoping the RC2 now with the external antennas will be a lot better. So I've just slightly increased my altitude here to around about 50, 60 meters now. And I just want to point out I'm flying in normal mode. So I highly recommend if you're going to be flying one in warm conditions anyway, like I am today, you shouldn't fly in sports mode for a long period of time. You have lots of battery voltage issues. The last thing you want is to have a voltage problem and your drone falls out the sky. So I would always fly in normal mode in hot conditions. And especially when I'm flying long distance here as well, normal is good enough. Sports mode's good at getting to different places, but in hot conditions and long distance conditions as well, it's not advisable. But we're just going over this thousand meter mark now and I'm at one bar of dropout yet, which is really, really impressive. You can look at the attitude indicator here and you can see from my home point, that little green arrow, I am basically facing direct behind my drone to get the most optimal signal performance. We'll just check the battery by tapping on it. You can see it goes down rapid. So it was on 24 minutes when I tapped on it. Now it's staying around about 20 minutes until return to home. So, so far, so good. So we're now approaching around about 1500 meters and this is the distance that the Mini 3 Pro was starting to struggle. It was getting weak signals, cutouts, problems with that Mini 3 Pro signal. Whereas now it's a lot better. We have dropped one bar of signal. It's fluctuating between four and five bars, but we're now approaching around about 1700 meters. So an actual signal strength, this is a lot better. So I really do know and appreciate this is not the most exciting of content, but believe me, so many of you guys want to know what this range is like. So this is the only reason why I'm doing this. So as we're approaching now around the 2000 meter mark, I'm just gonna check everything set up. So I have declassified my Mini 4 Pro drone. You'll have seen that video already. That signal has dropped now. We're now in yellow. So it's dropped now to three bars. At this point, this is where the Mini 3 Pro cut out at around about 2000 meters. However, on here, yes, it has dropped now to three bars of signal, now gone down to two. Oh dear, it's dropped down to one at the 2000 meter mark. This is not good. However, if we now increase the altitude, so I'm gonna increase that altitude now, taking it up to around about 90 meters in height, we have gained that signal again. So it's gone back up to four bars. 
So if you're flying low and your signal has become terrible, just increase your altitude and you should get a better signal. You can see in the attitude indicator, I'm still pointing directly behind the drone. My battery is still good and we are still plodding on. We're at 2,400 meters now. So we're over what the Mini 3 Pro could do. And we're at four bars of signal. This video is sponsored by Audio, where I get music and sound effects from. They've got thousands of music from real artists and sound effects, which get added to daily. The website's got this really clean and minimal layout, which makes searching and downloading for music tracks or sound effects super easy on your phone or laptop. But what's really exciting is that on the pro plan, they've just launched a new link match AI feature. So have you ever heard of a music track and you wanted to use something really similar on your video? Well, now you can. You can find any song on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, TikTok, just copy that and paste it directly into the audio search engine and it will actually then find you similar music tracks and it works absolutely fantastic. So now getting inspiration for a song and then actually using something really similar is super easy to do. And they've also got 70% off currently off that pro plan with my link in the description down below. So to get music and sound effects unlimited for just $59 for the whole year, this is such a fantastic deal. If you want to go and check it out, I'm going to link it all at the top of the description. Let's get back to this range test. So that really is a fantastic offer. And the music I'm using in this video is also by audio as well. So we're at three bars now of signal, 2,800 meters. So we're still carrying on. I've still got the same height. Everything's going all right. So yeah, the signal isn't fantastically strong, but it's good enough. And this is the CE version. So I was recently in America using it under FCC and bloody hell, that signal is a lot better, a lot more responsive, just better in general. But for us CE poor folk, this is fantastic. It's more than good enough. And we've now just passed over 10,000 feet, over 3,200 meters. This is really impressive for such a small drone. And what will also be great, you know, guys, is if you are enjoying this, just hit that like button. It's completely free, takes seconds to do, and it does help me out a lot. I do appreciate that. Okay, two bars of signal now, 3,500 meters. We're still going strong. We're getting closer and closer to those mountains. However, look, we've had another drop out there. So this is gonna be a bit more consistent now. We've now dropped down to one bar of signal on that RC. Now I would advise if this happens to you at any point, even if the drone is really close to you, bring it back to you. There is some kind of signal interference. So I've increased altitude now to 107 meters, just under 400 feet. It's still only on one bar of signal. However, it's not affected the actual feed. There is no lags, no stuttering in this feed. I've got full responsiveness to actually changing settings. So it's at that point where we can continue because I'm still in full control and have all the options available to me. So we're now passing 13,000 feet, 4,000 meters on this CE model. This is really impressive. We're getting loads of different error messages here. I'm seeing a little bit of breakup now starting to appear, but the drone is still continuing. Gonna increase the altitude a little bit more to 114 meters, still directly behind the drone, not bad. I can't believe it, it just keeps going. So this is so much better. This is the CE version. So the FCC version obviously is gonna be so much better, but for anybody flying the CE version of the Mini 4 Pro, the RC2, so far, it is brilliant. So much better than the RC1. However, now at four and a half thousand meters, we are getting a lot of stuttering now. If you look at the distance, it's a bit laggy. It's not the very best in terms of performance. But it just keeps going. This is really impressive. Um, I'm still on the one bar, so it's saying image weak. It's breaking up a lot now, so I think this is probably going to be its end. Yeah, it's really, really struggling now. So 4,700 meters. And this is where now I would say no matter where you are, if your actual feedback coming back to you looks like this, it's just completely unusable. You're not going to be able to do any like cinematic moves or get any good photos or videos when it's this laggy. 
But in the interest of science, I am just going to continue until I get a disconnect message saying that it's completely lost signal and then it will just return to home. So let's have a look at it now. So 5,000 meters were over, 16,000 feet. Now that is double, over double what the Mini 3 Pro with the RC was capable of. If we just have a look now, so it's still going. I can't see a feedback on my RC control. As you see, it's just stopped, but that distance is still increasing. We're over 5,300 meters now, and it is still going, but that doesn't last long. This is where the return to home, no transmission signal comes on. So 5,404 meters over 17,700 feet really impressive that is fantastic for the ce version so all i need to do now is press return to home and hope that battery lasts so it's coming back to me now via return to home it did so much better than the rc1 so it's because of these external antennas now i don't recommend doing flights like this never mind range tests because they are so boring i mean i would much rather come to a place like this and have all this fantastic landscape around here but also have the confidence that because this has got external antennas now your signal performance is a lot better so you can come to any area pretty much and not be concerned or bothered about that signal cutting out in the area that you're filming flying all the way over there to those mountains what nearly 5,000 meters away to deliver some Haribo to somebody is not what I'm here for so I know some of you guys are always asking what's the range on that mate how far will that go well the mini 4 pro and the CE version with the RC2 done really well. Now there's not a lot of interference around here. As you know, I've not got any obstructions between me and where the drone was going. So these are quite decent tests. The, the wind was not too strong today either. So it's not really gonna be any better than this. And this is the CE version. Obviously the FCC version, it is much stronger and that'll be better. So there you go, it's back. It's actually got 26% of battery life left now. Really impressed with that. So decent enough performance. So if I were to film anywhere in this area, I've got so much confidence with this. Don't do long range tests like this. They're just boring. Just fly in the areas that you're wanting to film. So if I were to like go a bit further back over there and get some wave shots and I've got full confidence if I wanted to do some low passes, over all of these sand dunes here. I've got full confidence. This is what this is for with the RC2 and the external antennas. Your signal performance, the Ocusync 4, is much, much better. If you enjoyed this video, guys, just make sure you hit that like button. It really does help out. And if you're new around here, a subscribe will be awesome because I've got loads of content coming really soon. See you in the next one.